Hey, what's up everybody? Steve with Penguin Outdoors, and today I'm going to show you how I installed and configured my Renogy DC to DC charger and my house battery in my 2020 Jeep Renegade. So stay tuned. A few months ago, I did a walkthrough video and showed you guys my 2020 Jeep Renegade as a whole, my entire off the grid, uh, remote living, camping, car camping setup. And since then, I've received a lot of questions about specifically my secondary battery system and my Renogy DC to DC charger, how I installed it all. Um, and I'm gonna show you all of the components and how I installed them so that you have the confidence to do this yourself because you can do this yourself. Now that said, I am not by any means a professional. So everything in this video is simply a guide. Do your own additional research and make sure that what you're doing is right and safe and correct and blah, blah, blah. That's the long winded way of saying, I'm not taking any responsibility for what you do with this video. I'm just showing you what I did. It's working out good for me. So I think what I'll do is show you the charger battery setup and everything. That's because 99% of the setup is contained here in the trunk. And then I will show you how I connected it to the vehicle up under the hood. And I'll show you my monitoring system that is up by the driver's seat. All right, so the first thing I did is I removed my floorboard because as you can see, that's where I have a lot of stuff. Now, if wire management is your thing, that's fantastic. It is partially my thing and very largely not my thing. So this is what it looks like under the surface. It could definitely be cleaner. Um, so when we get to the power inverter, I'm gonna show you something that I did that I actually don't like um, that I'm gonna change, but we'll get to that in a second. So let's start up here with the actual Renogy itself. This is a Renogy DC to DC charger. It operates both off of the vehicle and off of solar. This particular one is a 30 amp which was plenty for my needs. There are other models. You can take a look at that, decide for yourself what you need. I have the Renogy connected to my Power Queen 100 amp hour, 12.8 volt. This is a Group 24. This is their smaller version of the 100 amp hour. Same battery, physically slightly smaller than the battery I use for like my trolley motor in my kayak. I like it a lot, and with the limited space of the Renegade, this was a really good way to go. So the engine, sorry, let me back up. I don't want to say it that way. The Renogy is connected to the vehicle's electrical system so that when the car is running, the Renogy is charging my battery or maintaining my battery if it's already full off of voltage supplied by the vehicle. When it's not running, I have a solar panel that I can hook up and then it will charge my battery from the solar panel. The Renogy stays connected to the vehicle at all times. It's hardwired in. The solar panel connects right here with this little dongle. It's the other end from my solar panel setup. My solar panel is an eco-worthy 100 watt portable and I will put links in the description to all of the products that I'm showing you where you can buy them. And if there's a discount I can offer you, that information will be there also. So anyway, if I hook the solar panel up, charge the battery from the solar panel. When I'm driving down the road, charges the battery off the vehicle. My battery stays fully charged or darn close to it 95% of the time. Even when I'm off grid for two or three days, this usually does not get anywhere near half, which is awesome. No complaints there whatsoever. So from the Renogy to the battery, that's pretty much covers that part of the setup, okay? I have a fuse, or let me back up. So all of the negative connections, all of them, all go to this bus bar here. 
under this cover is a is four or five posts and all of my negative connections connect to here this then connects to the seat bracket of the back seat so everything is grounded to the back seat one connection between the back seat and the bus bar and then everything else negative goes into the bus bar it's a very nice organized way to do it that ground connection there goes to the ground on the battery so the ground on the battery connects to the seat post the positive on the battery connects to the Renogy between the Renogy and the battery is a 40 amp fuse you see right there I believe it's called a bus fuse but I don't remember again it'll be in the description from the battery I have a positive that goes to my power inverter and I have a positive that goes up to my fuse box the fuse box this is a um, light up fuse box actually from AutoZone of all places and under the cover there you can see it's got two fuses because I have two connections you can have six in total one of these goes to this uh, USB hub over here I can plug multiple devices into that one USB hub that wire just runs down under the plastic and comes out around here the other one is connected to this cigarette lighter here and that's how I power my fridge I could have plugged the fridge into the power inverter but I use the fridge all the time I only use the power inverter on occasion so I thought it best to just go with the cigarette lighter connection there and power the fridge that way you definitely want to have fuses between your battery and your accessories the reason there's not a fuse between the battery and the power inverter is the power inverter has its own fuses so that's not required now I said when we talked about the power inverter I would tell you something I did that I don't like I have the negative from the power inverter going to the bus bar like I do with everything else I'm not a fan of that this is a beefy power inverter and it doesn't do any harm to have it connected to the bus bar but personally I want I will be disconnecting it and connecting it directly to the battery I just don't see any reason in hindsight to connect the power inverter to any part of the system other than directly to the battery it's just it it's a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter this thing is a beast I just want it all connected to the battery so there's nothing wrong with that but I will be disconnecting the ground from the bus bar and moving it to the battery so my two negative connections will actually be the one going to the seat post and the one going to the battery you'll notice that there's a little negative wire here and a little positive wire here those run up to the front of the car to that thing right there which is my bat which is my system monitor I will show you that in a few minutes but that's what those are so that's power inverter from the DC to DC charger and out to my fuse box these go to my monitor and this is the ground that goes to the seat post or does it I don't remember actually no actually no that's a lie I've said that like five times but that's a lie my messy wiring be damned the negative from the battery goes to the bus bar the bus bar is connected directly to the seat post obviously because this is the ground for everything so it has to be connected to there I don't know why I told you differently it's been a little while since I wired this bear with me as you can see anyone can do it because I did it and I got confused by my own setup but I did it so you can do it too okay so if you have a smart alternator your Renogy setup needs to be connected to a fuse that is always on when the car is on what that means is the Renogy is connected under the hood to the electrical system I aka the alternator but because I have a smart or variable alternator they go by both terms small alternator variable alternator most modern vehicles are going to have that 
when you have that, the Renogy needs to know that the engine is running. And the way you do that is this little red wire here. You can see it there. That little red wire is connected to a fuse tap. Let me show you where, kind of. So you wanna pick something that turns on as soon as the car is running, not turns on when you turn on the ignition. So if I just press the ignition button, my stereo and everything comes on, but my engine isn't running. You wanna to connect to something that only comes on when the engine is running. So behind the dash here, there's a fuse box. And in that fuse box is, I wanna say it was the airbag fuse. I don't know, there was something in there that only had power when the engine was running. You can figure that out from your specific vehicle diagrams or by using a voltmeter. Um, but what I did is I just used a fuse tap. It's just a simple little thing. Um, look up fuse tap. It's just it basically turns one fuse slot into two so that you can have the factory fuse in there for whatever the device is and a second fuse that runs the wire back to where the energy is. And that's this wire here. I am going to link a video in the description from another content creator. They showed how they installed their Renogy. They are the ones I used personally. I watched a lot of videos. I used their video when designing my setup. They explain it in a level of detail that I'm not getting anywhere near, and they probably make more sense than I do. But because you, my viewers, wanted me to show you my setup, that's what I'm doing. So definitely check the description down below and watch their video too. I want to say the channel is called Freedom in a Can. It's just done very, very well. The video is great. They explain things great. And uh, it'll really benefit you guys to check that video out, video out also. Okay, so here is where my Renogy connects to the vehicle. Oops, helps if I release the tabs. This is a four gauge wire. Real quick before I go any further, let me say that again. This is a four gauge wire. I promise you that if you go with anything less than a four gauge wire, you're going to have regrets. I don't care what the Renogy book says. The installation paperwork and videos from Renogy tell you that you can use a eight gauge wire. They might even actually say 10 gauge, I don't remember. But I used an eight gauge originally and I promise you, you're gonna have a bad time. I had two separate connections melt. One of my grounds melted and one of my positives melted. And you know why? Because it has to be a four gauge wire. This is serious, serious juice you're talking about here. Everything that is connected to the Renogy and the vehicle is four gauge wire. Okay, I think I repeated it enough. So this is four gauge wire. There's an empty post here on the Renegade. Um, it's not really empty. It's diverting power from here into the distribution block. I removed that. I put my other 40 amp inline fuse there, connected this to the other end of the fuse, and it runs to the back of the vehicle. There's a 40 amp inline fuse here, and the one that I showed you at the back between the Renogy and the battery. So to be very clear, 40 amp fuse between the vehicle and the Renogy, 40 amp fuse between the Renogy and the secondary battery. So that is pretty much that. The Renogy connects to the vehicle and connects to solar. The Renogy then connects to the battery. The battery connects to the ground bus all ground goes to the bus, and it's all grounded by that seat post there. Power inverter connects to the battery. Hub for or um, distribution block, your fuse block, connects to the battery. It's all very copacetic. It's all very, very nice. This works great. I go out for a couple of days, and even without running the vehicle, I can run my fridge 24-7. I can power all my USB devices my fans, recharge my cameras. I can run my CPAP 
off of the power inverter. I can run a coffee pot, a microwave. There's really not a lot that I can't do off the grid with this setup and not think twice about it. It's a really fantastic setup. It's very reliable. And I was definitely about to forget to show you the Renogy one core, the monitor. So let's go do that. Because I was legit wrapping this video up and I was like, oh yeah, didn't show you that. All right. This is the Renogy one core turner on there. So it's always on. It just goes into standby after 15 minutes because that's how I have it set. This little section here tells me everything about my battery. So when the vehicle is running, I'll see starter battery amps and I'll see the charging amps, which is really all I need to know. This does not tell me what percentage my battery is charged. And the reason that is, I don't have the Renogy shunt. You have to have a battery shunt connected to the battery because that is what provides the information like current percentage charged, drained, um, average use, all that stuff. All that specific battery usage is provided to the Renogy One Core by the shunt, which I don't have because I don't care and partially because I didn't know when I first set it up that I needed that. And by the time I realized it, I decided I did not care because even after days out in the woods, I have not drained my house battery, so I don't care. But if you do care, you'll need to get the battery shunt in order to use that. So I hope this has helped you out. That thought, sounds like I flubbed over that. I hope that this helped you out. If it did, definitely hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions or anything, drop them in the comment down below and I'll do my best to answer it. But again, check my video description. Links to all the stuff is going to be there and links to the other YouTubers um, who did this setup. Like I said, I think it's called Freedom in a Can. So if it's not, I apologize for getting your channel name wrong, but it's a great video. It's way, way more like on point. Like they don't have my ADHD and they're, it's just a very clean setup. They know what they're doing. They explain it very well. So if you have any confusion from my video, check theirs out because I'm pretty sure between the two channels, you're going to be good to go. And again, any questions, ask them down below. I love when you guys reach out. I hope I helped you. So we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.